Dirk Jan Epping, Dutch journalist and politician, was born on the 7th of November 1958. He studied Dutch law at the Free University of Amsterdam and European law and international politics at the University of Amsterdam. In 1984, he moved to Brussels to become a trainee at the European Commission. After that, he worked for three years as an assistant to members of the European Parliament. In 2007, Mr. Epping moved to New York City. It's my most favorite city, absolutely. I, I regret <laughs> leaving it. It's, I call it the capital of the world. It's the roof of the world. Um, not only in, uh, in uh, financial services, but also in political thinking, uh, in the world of media. Mr. Epping and his wife worked for the United Nations. He also reported on the 2008 American presidential election. I was writing for weeklies in Holland and Belgium. Uh, I was working for radio uh, and for television. Uh, journalism and politics uh, seem to be very close together because journalists and politicians, they are basically in the same um, area, uh, in the same cosmos, if you like, or the same bubble. Um, but then the profession itself is different. Uh, as a journalist, you focus on what's going to be in the newspaper tomorrow. So you always short term. Uh, you interview, you look for quotes, uh, you analyze, but basically it's for the paper of tomorrow or the weekend paper, which is uh, then already far away. <clears throat> As a politician, you have to try to set something in, in, into motion. Uh, you, have to, you need to have a long-term view. In 2009, Epping returned to Belgium to run for the European Parliament for the Liste de Decker party. Mr. Epping was elected to the European Parliament and he is a member of the European Conservatives and Reformists group. I'm working basically in the field of uh, economic issues. So I'm a member of the um, Economic Monetary uh, Committee, uh, Transport Committee. I'm also a substitute member for the Budget Control Committee. And I'm a member of the EU-US delegation, which is also focusing a lot on financial regulation because the same issues are being dealt with in Washington. Uh, so I have generally, mostly I have an uh, economic uh, approach because the, the main issues of today in Europe are the economic ones and that's what we have to focus on. In March 2007, Mr. Epping published his book Life of a European Mandarin, which describes his experiences in the European Commission. In the summer of 2010, as a member of the European Parliament, he published a new book, Bonfire of Bureaucracy in Europe. I think that the ECR is giving a different voice in the European Parliament. Basically the European Parliament is ruled by one idea, which is the uh, ever closer union, and the ECR has a different voice, uh, and more of an opposing voice, and I think a parliament needs to have an opposition, an opposition voice, otherwise there, it's not really a parliament, and that's what we're trying to, uh, to organise. And with my new book I will try to give some uh, incentive to this, uh, and some new ideas and thought uh, about um, uh, how to have a different voice in the European Parliament, which is not anti-European or against the EU, which is constructive, but which try to liberate, liberate us from this one ruling idea, uh, the ever closer union, which does not really work, because in the case of Greece, we see that there is a limit to the ever closer union, so it's not ever closer anymore. And that's why we need new intellectual thinking. try to reflect what people in the street, the, the, the ordinary people, what they think about Europe. This is not heard in the European Parliament. What mostly happens in the European Parliament is that the voice of the European institutional elite is represented here. What the man in the street thinks is not reflected because it's regarded as not relevant. But the man in the street is very worried about what's happening with the euro at the moment and thinks about what about my retirement money, what about my savings, where is the money going? is going to be worth less. So these are the worries of ordinary people and this voice has to be represented. And that's one of the reasons why we tell the European elite listen more to ordinary people because their worries are sound and they are legitimate. And they have to be voiced in the European Parliament and that's what we are trying to do. Mm -hmm.